Melvi Broadcasting Network, a divine voice out of Africa. Remember to like, to subscribe, and to click the bell. Yes, my sister, greetings, and how are you? I'm very well. Thank you so much for joining us today, Amanda. The drive, not an easy one today. Yes, very difficult times, and uh, condolences to the Cullen family, as well as AWR, our colleagues in the gospel media space, broadcasters, and everyone whom our dear leader touched in their lives. It's a very difficult one this afternoon. And uh, we can never, ever assume that we are okay. We are not. Um, we cannot be okay. We have to feel this shock and the pain. This is a moment when you feel you want to reverse the arms of time back. This is when you tell the doctor they are joking, they are laughing, it cannot be. And you know, when you sent me that message yesterday morning, it just changed my whole day. And I just couldn't do anything but reflect on, so is this it? Is this how it all comes to an end for our dear brother? And, uh, you know, death has a way of never feeling the same. It doesn't matter how many times you've felt it. The pain is the same. So I just want to say condolences to the AWR family, wherever they are listening, wherever they are. I do not think we can pretend that we are fine. This has hurt us very deeply and it's painful. Definitely. How are you doing? Definitely. No, we are we are getting there. <laughs> like you said, but we have to go. It, it's a process, right? So yeah. you have to go through all the stages, and uh, there's definitely the shock. Mm. And but, like I said in the opening, that God, there's, there's comfort in knowing that God is a Father of compassion, yeah. and that He feels what we feel, he, even when He has a solution for it, even when He knows that it's not permanent. Yeah. He doesn't trivialize it. No. And make it like, and and we should also uh, understand that this is this is even for believers. Mm. We must never trivialize it and think that because we know and we believe that He's coming again, yeah. that all our loved ones will be raised. That Absolutely. doesn't take away from the pain that we see in the moment. Absolutely. It, it one of the thoughts that came through my mind as I was processing this was trying to figure out the heart of God when he has to allow such an adversity to happen to his children. What, what really goes through the heart of God? And this is when Calvary makes sense. I remember one singer saying, I've never seen 10,000 angels cry, but I guess when they cry, it rains. And that's why on Calvary there was rain. And... Uh, Angels moaned and they cried as the Son of God was dying. And he cried out, Father, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? Yet the Father was not forsaking him. The Father was actually winning for us the hope that today we can say over the death of our brother Sipo. The hope that says, even though he dies, Christ won the victory over the second death. And therefore there is hope that those who die in Christ today shall be resurrected. But also as I reflected on the heart of God, um, the fact that he kept focused on the bigger picture and did not allow his own pain as God to overshadow the whole event. But we see a glimpse of his pain in that it got dark that day. Oh. On that hour, it was dark. There was an earthquake when God shuddered and felt the pain of the loss of his son on the cross. So I know when a saint of God, a child of God, such as our brother and our leader Sipo was, rests in this manner, God's heart feels it. I may never have a deep understanding of it, but Calvary stands as an example of what God could feel whenever someone dies. So we know, I think as we process it and we try to get into terms with this, this is when you realize that we only have a short time to make our impact. 
it hit me hard the other moment when I was reflecting. Sipo and I were of the same year. We were born the same year. We were, we were brothers almost in the same generation. Uh-huh. And yet Sipo has done ex- excellently well. And that reminded me of the fact that says, you know, time and chance happens to all of us. The reality is that right now, whoever is listening to us woke up this morning. The question we must ask is, why did I wake up and Sipo didn't wake up yesterday? Why am I alive today? What is the purpose for which God has brought me to this space? And I was watching one of his videos on YouTube as he was talking about his 25-something years in broadcasting. And he says, why did I stay so long in broadcasting? And he says, it's because that's my passion. That's my purpose. So I want to challenge someone out there and say, Sipo knew that my purpose was to be behind the microphone. And as I was reflecting on those words, I said, you're right, my brother. When it comes to broadcasting, he was a fish in the water. Absolutely. You know, we, 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 we cannot clap for him for doing what he did because he was doing what he was born to do. Right. You know, so he accepted the... Ch- and, and look at him moving from the corporate space and the radio pulpit and coming to be with us at AWR. Yeah. The humility the excellence that exuded in his passion and the drive that he had, which is exactly what many of us must do. I want to share and say, it is not the years we are going to live that will make us great. It is the life that we put in the years. Amen. Let me say that again. It is not how long we're going to live that matters. It is how much life we put in the few years that we are going to live on this earth, someone called it the dash between your date of birth and your date of death. And that's that's how we rush it. That's how we write it. It's always 1975-2022. dash There's a dash there. And literally that dash means it's a rush. It's a run. You are competing against time. You just have to be on your run. And by the way, death is surely coming to all of us one day. And therefore, as I reflected, I I knew that we may have lost our brother for this moment in this lifetime, but I know heaven has gained a soul. His influence, I think he he was running a hashtag, I am the influence. (laughs) His aspiration was to share what he had in his heart. And sometimes... People don't know how to share. You know why? It's because we've never experienced Jesus at a personal level. When the bug of knowing God has beaten you, you can't keep silent. You cannot keep silent. And I, and I believe in his music, in his emceeing, in his preaching, on radio, wherever he was, Sipa was inspired to share Christ. He could have made a lot of money. He could have died a billionaire. But he did die a billionaire, not in monetary terms, but in terms of the impact he has heard. Uh. I mean, I listened to him this morning and I was creating a, a, a memorial clip that I wanted to share with our Melvi family. Uh-huh. When he was so passionately speaking in March and saying, Noel, uh, Saneliso, patience, you give me four months and I delivered the radio station. Here it yeah. is to you. And I'm like, this man created this platform and built it and assisted us to have this platform in a record time. Where, where do you find that passion from unless it is from God and knowing what God has done for you? So, I sit here today and I reflect and I see that when God has become a reality to us, Uh the rocks will not cry out in my place. As long as we have breath in our nostrils, Uh we will proclaim Jesus to the world. And that's exactly what the inspiration I gained from my brother. I remember one of the conversations we had. Remember you phoned me 
I think someone had not come through to the broadcast and you wanted someone to fill in and you phoned me, it was a short notice. Right. And I said, no, I'm available, I'll, I'll step in. And the first broadcast I had with him, for a moment I thought Sipo is not there, he's gone off because it was silent, dead silent. Uh -huh. And I kept saying, can you hear me? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I was like, yes, my leader, yes, my leader, I'm here. And what I noticed later on was that he then says, you know, the Lord has given you the gift to share. I would like you to continue on that sport if you can. Please, my brother. Uh, and I said, ah, Sipo, what is the vision? He said, my brother, we just want to lift Christ. We want to lift Yeshua in our generation because he's coming and we do not have much time. Yep. If only I had understood what he meant... Perhaps I would have acted differently, but I think I understood the agency he mentioned. Now it makes more sense when he is no longer with us. Yeah. And and I was really humbled by that invitation and his confidence in us doing this together, which really shares a thought that I had a discussion with him during the lockdowns. Remember, that's when he produced that song, uh, Lord Heal Our Land, and... Um, Sipo's vision was we should not compete for broadcasting to the same people. There's power in collaboration. And that's why, uh, as Melva Broadcasting Network, we agreed to take that slot and we cooperate with AWR and to work together. And there are many people that he brought on the stage. So he didn't share the glory by himself. He wanted to make sure he works with others. And it's an honor to be here to continue and no longer expect that he's going to come back because he's resting. And so today as I reflect and I process what has just happened, I am realizing that time does not wait for anybody. When you get a chance to do something, do it with all your power. We have to continue now without him, but we shall have to be inspired by his spirit, by his dynamic energy, by his vision. And the gift that he had and the, 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 the humility he had and the passion that drove him to do what he did, we just have to continue without him. I mean, if you look at what he was and you compare to yourselves, you're like, oh my goodness, Maybe this guy had five talents, I had two. <laughs> you know? But let no one be like the one who had one talent and who buried it. Because he was a family man, he, he was a leader, he was a composer, he was a musician, he was a broadcaster. I mean, the, he was a full package. And so today we may not hear him and see him alive again, but I will bless the name of Elohim. I will bless the Lord forever because he gave us him for that short time. And what he left us with is so much that none of us can ever say we don't have an opportunity to serve God because he created that avenue and he helped us to realize what we have. So death is a painful process. Um, if you have never gone through an experience of losing a loved one, you may not understand the pain. But I'm sure for those who have gone through death before, you know that it's a, it's, 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 it can never be right. There's everything wrong with this thing. And that's why I believe the Bible in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 26, when it says, the last enemy, you see the word that's used there, it's enemy. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. So when Jesus shall come, the Bible says in that same chapter of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, he shall come with the glory of the Father and of the angels and his glory. There shall be a loud trumpet. For that trumpet must sound so that the dead, beloved friends and family members must hear it. No one must wake them up, but their Lord himself shall descend with the shout, with the trump of God. 
and those who died believing in Christ, such as our brother Sipo, shall resurrect into the newness of life. I believe there's one more sermon he shall preach before he goes to heaven, because the Bible says he shall come up and say, Oh, death, where is your sting? And oh, grave, where is your power? For in that day, death shall be swallowed up in victory as he will resurrect from the dead to join those who are living so that we may be together with the Lord in heaven. And so to our beloved listeners, yes, it is painful to be separated. Yes, it is grievous to process the thought that our leader is no longer there. Yes, it is disheartening when we have to regroup ourselves without the leader and have to reshape what we were doing here without him. But let me assure you, we still have the greatest lead among us, Holy Spirit, the ah. Spirit of the living God. May it touch each one of us from Melvi, from AWR, from the Adventist community to SID Media, all the world without ends. My prayer is that today, may the Spirit of the living God comfort us with that comfort that was given to the saints before, that we may stand and proclaim that Jesus is our Savior and he is coming soon and that one day this death shall also die. And I believe we are closer than we were before. We know the Lord will lead us. So I pray my sister today and our listeners out there that do not despair do not be discouraged by whatever has befallen us now. God will take care of us. He will take care of us. He will see us through. In fact, my prayer right now, my sister, is that may God raise a Joshua for us. Because God said, Joshua, my servant Moses is dead. Be strong, therefore, and be courageous. Have I not commanded thee? Have I not told you? Be strong and be courageous. This is the time for us to stand up and thank God. Stand up and be courageous. Stand up and be counted and carry the button that our leader has left with us. And this is my prayer. This is my hope. This is my desire. This is my wish for all our AWR, SID media listeners out there. I say be strong. Be encouraged by the fact that God has left us, has not left us comfortless. We have the spirit of truth, the spirit of comfort with us. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you so much, Brother Melody. Maybe amen. Before you leave us, before we let you go, if you can just pray for our listeners. Just yes. to, have, to be encouraged and to use the time that we have on this earth wisely and to take this not as not as a grim warning and not as, as something to be sad about, but in fact something to be excited about. Something, mm. you know, it, it's always exciting when you wake up in the morning and there's something, you have something positive to do that is a part of your purpose Amen. That, that energizes you. And so I'm praying that God will fill us all with that mm. same sense of urgency and that mm. energy that, that people exuded in his, in his daily life, in his passion, in his, in his media. So please just pray for our listeners. Amen. As we bow our heads to pray, I want someone to remember that when Isaiah saw the king Uzziah dying, a great leader, a great man of God, he says when he died, I saw the Lord sitting in his temple, lifted up with mm. his garment filling the whole temple. And he says, I felt like I was a dead man. But heaven sent a call of fire and touched my tongue. And the question was asked, who shall I send? Isaiah said, here I am, Lord. It is time for us to stand up and take the mantle and run with it. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Father in heaven, we come to you this afternoon. Hurting, in pain, confused, in denial, angry and discouraged. We are an emotional wreck this afternoon because of the loss of our dear brother and our leader, our manager. We never thought this would be the day we will speak to him in the past. 
Father, we know you are the God of all comfort. There's no other place we can go to here where we can be comforted and led and blessed besides your throne. I'm praying, O oh Lord, that this moment to lift up every listener who's listening to us right now in tears, in sorrow, in disbelief, in the agony of realizing the loss we have just had, I pray, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name, that may you give them the spirit of truth. Breathe upon them the breath of life. Father, we pray at this moment, just like Isaiah saw the angel come with the call of fire, I pray that you may touch somebody this afternoon with the fire of heaven and prepare them to continue the work that our leader has left in our hands. We pray for the Kalani family. We pray for the AWR team. We pray for the SID media leadership team. Many of them are impacted by this in ways we can never understand. We pray that may your comfort and your spirit be upon them. Give them the vision to continue and the energy to carry this work forward. Father, I pray for the blessings of heaven. Deliver us now from the power of the wicked one. Comfort us with the comfort that only you can provide. We pray, Father, that as we go through this funeral, we may see you, we may know you in a way that we have never understood you before. Pour your spirit upon us. Send your angels to guide and to protect us, Lord, at this difficult time. Help us to walk through this dark cloud upon us and cause us to believe and to be joyful again and to be grateful that you have delivered. Bless us now. Lead us, for we ask and pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that beautiful prayer and thank you for coming through and sharing that encouragement and your uh, a snippet of your experience of, of, of knowing people. Thank you so Amen. much. Amen. Blessings and bye-bye. Sharing, you know, some of the work that, uh, how, in fact, they came to work with uh, Adventist World Radio and how people was all about collaboration. And I always loved that about about this ministry. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, we're all going for the same thing, right? If the main thing is to keep Jesus lifted up and keep him lifted high, then there's no competition. We're actually partners. You know, different organizations, different um, different uh, methods sometimes, but we are all doing the same thing. We're all, we all have the same goal, which is to lift up Jesus and bring on the second coming as quickly as possible so that we can be reunited with our loved ones who have passed on. But uh, thank you once again for out to you, Brother Melissa Galabi from the Melody Broadcasting Network. And I hope that you've all been inspired to chase after that, that passion that God has put in your heart, your purpose, the purpose for which you were created. Each and every one of us are here for a purpose. No one is here by accident. So spend time with the Holy Spirit. Let God lead you and direct you into where you are supposed to go so that you too can live every day of your life full of purpose and knowing exactly what you're supposed what, you, what is your assignment here on earth. And at the end of your life, we can all smile in our pain and know that you did what you came here to do and your life was not wasted, right? That is our aim and that's our goal Amen. while we are here on this earth. Let's take a music break. We'll be right back after this. AWR Powered by SID Media Melody Broadcasting Network, a divine voice out of Africa. Remember to like, to subscribe and to click the bell.